Hi there, and a very warm welcome to this week's Quick Tip, in which we are going to talk about a rather cliche shader, which is the car paint shader. Now, even if you know how to do a car paint shader, I hope you can pick up the one or the other thing along the way and therefore expand your shading knowledge anyway. So let's buckle up and let's get going. Okay, welcome to 3D Land. Let's have a look at our scene for today. So this is the third hand scene that I modeled some time ago and we will be focusing on the stand and giving it a car paint material. So this car paint material has everything that a good car paint material should have, a metallic base, a flakes layer, as well as a clear coat on top of it. Now the scene I choose because I don't want to bore you with my material ball scene and also all my Patreons get access to every new scene file I use in my tutorials. So this scene file here is available on Patreon right now if you subscribe no matter what tier you're using. The link is down in the description below. Now without any further ado, let's get shading. Let's prepare our scene a little bit by deleting those materials as well as deleting the original car paint material and we are going to do that from scratch. Next we want to make sure that all the other parts are hidden so we can concentrate on the stand to start shading. As I've promised in the intro, we will be going for a different approach. So even though if you have made car paint materials before, this is something new probably for you. So we are going with a octane layered material. Let's call this layered material car paint and let's dive into its notes. Here we go. So what you can see within the car paint layered material is that we have just this blob of a node where we can plug in a base material as well as a layer one. Within the node, if we click on it, we are able to create those. So let's create the base material here and let's actually call it base because this is our base of our car paint. As you see in the settings, this is a glossy material, but the base of car paint materials are mostly the metallic layer. So let's create a metallic material actually here. And while we are at it, let's change the BRDF model here to GGX Energy Preserving. Now, if you're not familiar with BRDF models, I made a tutorial on this topic. The link is in the upper right corner of this video right now. Before we go any further, let's actually apply this material to our stand here and we see that we created some sort of chrome material. Now, small disclaimer here, we are creating a very basic car paint material. You can go infinitely complex with those, but we will just be creating a three-part car paint material that is rather basic, but if done right, looks pretty good on almost any object. There are two things that a base material in a car paint shader has. One thing is roughness. So let's dial up the roughness to maybe 0.4. We can change this later on, but for now it seems to be a good starting point. And then the other thing is this is the layer where your coloring of your car paint comes into play. Whatever color your car has is done here. So let's go to the specular layer and create a RGB spectrum here and then dial in some bluish color as we had that in the beginning. So maybe we start with 0.2, 0.4 and 0.8 maybe. So don't make this too bright as there's always some energy loss when light is hitting materials and you get heat from that for example. Okay, this is a great start. So actually, let's do the coating layer next before we jump into the flakes because the flakes are the most complicated layer there is inside of a car paint material. So to do the coating, actually, it's rather simple. You just have to know one thing. Obviously, we are dealing with the layer one here. So let's go to the layer one and add a layer. Now, there's a plethora of materials you can add and some of the materials sound familiar, what you might be looking for is a glossy material, but it's not listed here. And this is because, if you think about it, a car paint clear coat is basically clear and see-through. 
So what you actually want to do is go with a specular material. So here we go, we have a specular material on top and let's make sure it's the right IOR. Yes, it is. And if we move our camera now and move it and wiggle it around here, you can see now on top of our roughness, we have a clear coat layer that gives us a shiny reflection. And with the IOR, we actually make sure that the reflection strength is the right amount. So if we have a smaller IOR, the reflection is weaker. You can see that here a little bit. And if we go for a unnatural high IOR, for example, too, the reflection is stronger and the material gets a unnatural high direct reflection here. So let's dial it back to 1.5 again. This is already the time to add our flakes layer. And the flakes layer comes in between the base and the clear coat. So let's actually call this clear coat. Here we go. To make a layer here, we click on the car paint and then go to basic and actually add a number here, so three. Now the last layer adds on the last part or on the top of the material. So since we want the flakes layer to be in between, Let's actually take our clear coat and pipe it into the last layer here, which is the most top layer on our car paint shader. The material of the flakes is also metallic in nature. So what we need to do is go to layer one, add layer, metallic layer. Here we go. So let's make place for the flakes here. And basically what's happening right now is that the metallic layer here overrides the base layer, which is okay since we are dealing with the setup of our flakes for now. Let's call this layer flakes. Here we go. And then let's care about the flaky look here. And this comes in with the help of a node. So let's create a node. And a wonder, it is called flakes. Here we go, flakes. So let's pipe it into the normal of the material and solo it for a quick second. What you might need to know is that this is a procedural shader and it can be a bit computational heavy at first when you start it. Please have patience when you first plug it into the material as it might not show up right away. So once we have that, you can see that those flakes are enormous and huge. So we need to make them smaller. Also, we need to find a way to make them a little bit more organic so we don't have those seams here. So when you have those problems, it's always a good idea to try if the tray planer method here is working. So let's try this here by giving the material a projection, setting the projection to tray planer. And then what we also need is the tray planer node after the material, otherwise it won't work. So let's call for that shader and tray planer. Here we go. Let's fit it in here. And also maybe let's get rid of the transform port so it looks more slick. Now, as you've seen here, the flakes are gone. And this is because we are soloing our flakes instead of the triplanar. So let's try this one here. And as I've said, this is a procedural effect and the calculation might need some time here. Now the flakes have gone even larger. So let's actually get a transformation going here. Transform, here we go. And let's make this reasonably small. So as you might have noticed, Octane loves small values. So let's go with 0 0.00375 or something. I obviously tested that before. And this gives us our nicely scaled flakes. Last thing I want to do to this branch is go to the triplanar here and set the blend angle from 5 degrees to 25 degrees. And here we go. Now let's display that without the solo. Sometimes you have to do stuff like this to make it work or even reload the scene. All right, here we go. So Octane can sometimes act a little bit flaky on that. 
Let's deal with the material properties. So since we have circular flakes as well as portions where the reflection is still straight, what we could do is get the color from our base feed it in here and then this becomes our base. So we have both in one material combined the flakes as well as the straight parts. One problem arises if we want to distinguish the flakes, for example, with a different roughness. Speaking of roughness, let's actually dial that into the flakes material. So let's go to basic and don't forget to switch the BSDF material to GGX energy preserving. Then go to roughness and set it to the same roughness as our base 0.4. Now you can see that this makes the flakes a little bit too dull. So we want to separate out those flakes from our base material. Let's cut the connection here again and duplicate this material and get the connection going with the specular for this one here. So let's actually make it a little bit brighter in color. So we go with 0.6 and 0.4. Here we go. So same rough U, but the color is a little bit lighter. Also, let's dial back the roughness. So we don't want to have a roughness of zero, but also we don't want to have a roughness of 0.4. So let's go with the middle 0.2. Here we go. Let's actually deal with the separation of our flakes from the base layer. So we need a alpha or a opacity layer that tells apart these circular shapes from the rest of the normal map. And actually, I have thought about this and the best way to do that for me right now is to use a color key. So let's hit tap, color key or just key. Here we go. And basically, this is the same thing what you would do in compositing. You have a color that you want to key out and then you get a mask in black and white with the key inside of that. So basically an alpha. To make this key work, we need to pipe in the triplanar map here and then pipe that into the alpha or the opacity to use the right terms. Let's actually define our key by going to the color picker and actually pick the color that's in here in the preview and this happens to be the right color. So now if we solo our color key, this is completely black. And the reason for that is the too high cutoff here. So if we set this to zero and then zoom in a little bit closer, you can see now that we are sort of getting a key for our circles. Now let's make this a little bit more strong by going to the high cutoff and actually setting it to a low value of 0.1. Now this makes the rest of the mask slightly gray. So let's go to the low cutoff again and setting it to 0.01. So we have a clearly defined mask for our flakes. Let's move out a little bit and disable the solo and let's see if that worked. And yes, it seemed to have worked quite well. So we now have a mask for our flakes on top of that. What I want to do is make the flakes just a little bit smaller. So let's go with 0.3. Here we go. And then move out here. And basically, that is our car paint shader. Now, as always, for the last bit, let's make this a tad bit more realistic by going into the clear code and giving it a little bit of a structure. So what we're going to do here is go and find the octane noise. Um, here we go. And we will leave it at Perlin and then move it inside of the clear codes bump. Here we go. So let's see what this is looking like. Somehow the render got stuck a little bit, but no worries, here we go. So obviously this is much too strong. And if we solo that, we also can see that there are seams. So we are using our old trick from the tutorial last week and go with a projection that we then set to XYZ to UVW. Here we go, now our noise is seamless and 3D. So this should be only used with non-deforming objects. 
as this one is, so this is no problem. But it also got a quite big scale now. So what we need to do is scale down this scale again a little bit to get the proportions right. Something like this maybe. So let's unsolo this and let's have a look what this is looking like with our bump. Of course, it is still much too strong. Also, we want to see more detail. So again, I will raise the octaves, which is basically the details of the noise. So usually my go-to value is 8. And then what I always use is go to the color correction here put it inside of the note stream between the noise and the bump, and then put in a very low value here. So something like 0.002, for example. And let me zoom in a little bit closer, and in the reflection of the light you can see it. So maybe this was a little bit too low, so let's actually go with 0.005. And you can see that this gets a little bit bumpy. And also those lines, you can see that. And this makes it so much more realistic than if you have a just straight flat reflection. Let's actually go with 0.0075 for now to overdo it a little bit maybe. But you can see the effect clearly appearing on screen. Obviously, there is a lot more we can do to fine tune and tweak the material, but I will leave it at this for now. And let's turn back on the rest of our third hand here. Let's wait until it renders. There are some heavy materials on there, so this is the reason that it takes so long to update. But on the other hand, it's a quite nice deep dive if you're into materials and want to see what I've done with those. Again, if you like the stuff I do and want to support me, you might want to become a Patreon. As a bonus, you get instant access to this scene and all the other scenes I've used in the past. So those have containing materials that you can use on other projects or you can use the objects even commercially. So if you want to support me or just gain access to the scenes, the link to my Patreon is down in the description below. Speaking of my Patreons, I don't know what was going on in the month of August, but I have been swamped with new Patreons. So thank you all so much, especially my 50 euro tier subscriber, Chiels Augustinen and Leon Studio TV. But also my 15 euro tier subscribers, which has increased a lot. Maybe you can spot some of those. A huge thank you to Anton. Pavana, BVR, Computer Generated, Eduardo Vecchietti, George Luna, Jakob Fung, Shui Ciccoline, Just a Frickin, Chris Clemson, Lutger, Lucas Bazon, Marty Kane, Part 1 of 2, Raiko, Render King, aka Alessandro Bonchio, Seen CGI, Shamus Johnson, Terry Wayne Ranson, and Yasin Rupp. Thank you all so much for your enormous support. So, this was the cliche car paint tutorial. Hopefully, you still learned something new today. If you did, write it down in the comments below. And also, if you're still hearing that, Thank you so much for staying so long. Let's post a car emoticon in the comments for car paint, obviously. And with that, I say an amazing start into this week and happy layering. Bye.